Hello, my lovely Tauruses, and welcome to your December 2019 reading. Oh my gosh, we're at the end of 2019, the end of the decade. I feel this is going to be a big month, and I know that it's going to be a big start to the year. I've already started doing the 2020 yearly um, research for the reading, okay? So that's, it's going to be a big year. And I do think that we're going to close out the year in a pretty big way with two eclipses this month as well. Um, so it's going to be pretty big. Um, all right, so I'm going to start this off by talking a little bit about the astrology, and then we're going to get into the cards. I actually, you are the only sign that for some reason, I really wanted to make a list out of each thing I wanted to go through with you. I usually just kind of go with the energies, but I felt we needed some organization for this reading. So I'm excited to see how this goes. I don't usually pull monthlies this way, <laughs> but all right, so. If you guys haven't, do make sure to subscribe, check out the dailies, and check out your monthly readings for your other placements. Um, and if you want to book a private reading, guys, as usual, all that information is right below this video in the description box. So we're starting this out on the 3rd of December with Jupiter moving into Capricorn, which is going to be in your ninth house of spirituality, your search for meaning in life. Um, you're going to be, um, you know, any areas of studying, studying deeper knowledge or deepening the knowledge that we have. It's very expansive and expanding our horizons here. It's going to um, have some great aspects with Uranus in your sign. And it's going to bring forth a lot of opportunities to travel far, to um, bring about solutions to problems, bring about inspirations and learning. On the 10th of December, we have Mercury moving into Sagittarius, which is your 8th house. So you'll be sorting out more money-related stuff and problems, you know, with finances. Mars and Scorpio in your 7th house all month um, is putting a lot of energy into your relationships. And you might be asking yourself, am I being proactive in my relationships? On the 11th, 12th of December, we have that full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini, which is going to bring forth a lot of new business ideas, um, a lot of stuff that maybe you've been trying to manifest in terms of business, career, money, um, might be coming to fruition. Um, you know, your money career looks really great for this, so definitely I would say um, start manifesting and working towards some goals that you want to see come to fruition by that full moon in Gemini. can also, though, bring about, you know, what is not working in those areas as well and what needs to be fixed. On the 20th, 21st of December, we have Venus moving into Aquarius, which is great news about more career and job direction stuff, okay? Um, maybe meeting new, more people um, through work and, uh, you know, new communities through work and through people that we're meeting at this time through those avenues. On the 22nd of December, we have the sun moving into Capricorn. And then on the 26th of December, we have the solar eclipse in Capricorn, which is also, again, in your ninth house of spirituality and, you know, looking for the meaning of life, studying, um, expanding our horizons in in-depth ways. So you could be meeting a lot of new people here um, if you are willing to get out of your comfort zone. Um, Really, I would say this is opening you to really receive some really wonderful energy and some understanding from the cosmos. So this is a really interesting month for you, Taurus. And as we usual, Uranus in your sign, I believe it's still retrograde, is still knocking about, making a lot of transformational aspects, conjunctions, squares, all sorts of stuff with um, a lot of planets. So we'll be looking at that as well. But let's see what your energy is this month here. I'm using my original deck here, my very first deck, the Rider Weight. And we're going to, oh, wow. Okay, I guess we can't really ignore that one. And this is exactly how I feel your energy is this month. I mean, incredible, guys. I'm not even going to pull any more yet. Um, the Tower. I knew this was going to be an intense reading, and I felt, you know, that's why we might need to structure it a little bit by making a list of all the things I want to get through for you guys. Because um, usually I'm very esoteric with my readings and I go all over the place and I pull how I feel. It's very intuitive and wishy-washy Piscean. But the tower is weird energy this month. We're ready to make some radical changes. We're ready for things to come in and knock us out of the tower. It's almost like, I don't know, I get this feeling you guys have been asking for this for a while. Change is coming in. Change is necessary. And with Uranus in your sign, I think that we're getting a lot more comfortable by this point in terms of things are just going to blow up like that. We're going to be experiencing a lot of tower moments the next seven years, and we're getting used to it. In fact, at this point, I feel we're anticipating it. So I'm going to look at what your focus is this month, and then we're going to look at a couple um, you know, week-by-week -week cards, and then we're going to get into some more fun stuff. 
All right, so let's look at what your focus is this month. I'm just going to keep it short for how I get into these cards until everything is out, and then we're going to really get into the big picture here. It's going to be an exciting read, guys. I can feel it. <laughs> the Tower. And, oh. <clears throat> Oh, I'm not surprised at all. I'm not surprised that this is your focus this month. Love. I was going to say, I really feel like this is a very love focus, you know, looking at the depth of our relationships. And I guess we can really thank Mars and Scorpio for that. Honestly, it almost feels like we're, yes, we're in Sagittarian season, but I think that because Mercury is retrograde in Scorpio, all of Scorpio season, a lot of that stuff is kind of percolating out coming to the surface being dealt with and finally coming to a head so love situations um really really looking good here your focus is really bringing equality into relationships making sure that we're on an equal playing field making sure you know that this is a fair truly a fair exchange and i really like it so let's look now at the week by week situations here and interestingly enough we're going to actually go to what deck are we going to go to? A lot of decks wanted to be used for you guys this month, so we're just, we're rolling with the punches here. I'm really feeling the Hermetic, so we're going to do that for the week by week here. All right, week one's major focus, major energies, defining energies of the first week of December. Oh, okay. Defining energies for... December. Come on. Oh my gosh. I don't know what's going on with this deck right now. Hold on. All of these cards are just kind of like freaking out. And none of them are coming out just one at a time. All right. Week by week here. Finally, we're getting somewhere. I think that we... Oh. I think that we needed to kind of unmask a layer here to get to this. Because this feels very... Like a lot of insecurities and desires are being brought up this month. And it's really interesting to see how this plays out. First week, we get the Eight of Pentacles. Second week, the Ace third week the five of pentacles and then the last week of december we get the magician and i really like that we're ending the year starting 2020 with this energy it's really really beautiful um wow so yeah the first week here is being prudent in terms of work i mean this card is literally called the lord of prudence so it's time to really start focusing and shifting our goals our energy towards you know what can we create what do we need to do and putting in those efforts where we need to if we want to get to that ten of pentacles we want that money we want that upgrade we want that job um we're gonna need to really start working towards it and again this can go for relationships as well or working in terms of you know bettering your health your um physical appearance anything like that because pentacles do, do rule those areas but overall it feels like just your quality of life especially having to do with money career and your financial stability is really in focus this month and i'm not surprised i mean cap i mean even though capricorn rules your ninth house of spirituality there is a certain sense of um responsibility groundedness and career focus that capricornians and the capricornian energy is known for and again there is a lot of there's a lot of movement that's bringing up career stuff for you guys this month so we just we already went into through that with all the astrology and if you want to look more into the astrology i highly suggest gregory scott or white light astrology i really like both of them for their descriptions on it they're both great so look into them if you want to know a little bit more about the astrology this month because it's banging. <laughs> um, and then again, the, on the third week, I'm sorry, on the second week here, we get the Ace of Pentacles, which is such a contradiction to that third week, Five of Pentacles. Um, it could be that we are really focusing on solidifying an opportunity, a goal, a situation. Sometimes I see the Ace of Pentacles as literally a job opportunity that is very solid, that we can really trust investing our money into something, getting a lot of money back for some reason. And don't worry, we'll look a little bit more in depth 
um, throughout the rest of the cards that come out and see how these energies week by week, these overarching things that are coming out here at first play into all the intricacies. But at the end of the week, um, almost the end of the week, end of the month here, your last week, is, has you focused on your own personal power and what you can bring to the table, what you can really do. And the magician knows that it can do whatever it needs to. It has all the power. It's got, you know... It's got everything, all the four elements there. The magician says, you know, I'm ready to take it on. Let's do this. Like, I'm ready to use my powers. I'm ready to use all the experience that I've cultivated to start going. And I do feel that 2018, sorry, 2018, 2019 was a real building year for you to get to this point, for you to get to the point where now as we go into 2020, this new decade, we're ready to freaking own it and bring our power to the table and show everybody what we got. We want to make some change. We really want things to shift. And that is obvious this month with the energy, with your energy being the tower. Don't forget that this is your energy. You're willing to make the sacrifices to let something fall apart in the name of something better because what you really want and your goals is a fair exchange. If it hasn't felt fair, if it hasn't felt balanced, especially in terms of relationships, maybe career, money, issues like that, stability has been hindering your relationships and hindering you from getting um, where you've wanted to go. And that's why all this kind of ties in here. I mean, all things do. So let's get into now our major obstacles and defining events of the month, okay? And we're going to use, again, we're going to go back to using the... Why do I, I always want to call it something else, the Rider Weight Tarot. <laughs> I almost just wanted to call it the OG Tarot, and that is just not what it's called. <laughs> so let's see here. Um, your major obstacles are defining events of the month here. Let's look at that. <sighs> Come on. For Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. And again, guys, I always recommend you to go and check out your other placements especially your rising my rising is cancer and often i find that i resonate even more so with the cancer readings and even aries readings because i have i was born right on the cusp of it like right right on that zero degree cusp of aries and i have so much aries in my chart so really look at that and see if any other placements might be important or interesting to check out Again, if it doesn't resonate, the messages aren't for you. Don't get upset. Why are we not getting... Oh, okay, wow. Well, that's why. I was like, why are we not getting anything for your defining events and major obstacles this month? This is uncomfortable for you. I feel this month, it's almost like you're being called out in a lot of ways. It's like not the best feeling, but also... It's like you've been asking for the direction. You've been asking for the answers. And it's going to come. It's not going to feel great. It's going to feel like a personal attack for some of you. But I really feel like it's going to end up where it needs to. What is going to lead to this month? These defining and major events. Why am I not surprised to see you again? Are you serious? Okay. Here we go. We got a lot of cards out. A lot more than I expected. A lot more than I anticipated and even really wanted. But I'm going to have to find a place now for all these decks. I have way too many decks on the table here. Let's all be honest. Um... Maybe that's how you guys feel because I have not felt so like discombobulated. It's like I'm very in the energy, but your energy is very discombobulated and there are layers to it. You don't really want to talk about some of these things. I know that you don't. I can sense it with the way the cards came out as soon as I was like, all right, let's just get real here and stop beating around the bush. The world reverse comes out. Hmm. Okay. And then everything kind of just started spitting itself out here. The world reversed, the eight of pentacles, the five of swords reversed. Um, we're ending, you know, work cycles where that have been a loss to us. I mean, that's very clear here. And somebody might be really throwing that in our face, King of Wands and Three of Swords Reverse, in a way that is uncomfortable. But also, if we look at it in a less sensitive, personally sensitive, you know, taking personal offense to the whole situation, if we look at it from a different perspective that doesn't involve all those feelings... 
it's like you understand that this is truly for healing and that this is better because what it all leads to all this craziness is nine of cups two of swords and then the death card trans you know we have some some wishes so this is almost like a dream wish manifestation here what have you wanted the fulfillment is here but you have to make a choice to leave something behind in order to get it you have to really make the choice here. You know that you've needed to make a choice. This is literally the energy of knowing that what you want is right there. It's right here. The fulfillment's right there. But now the choice is being straight up in front of you. So if you've been wondering, when am I going to like understand this situation? Why can't I seem to get to where I'm going? What's going on here? It really feels to me like this is the month that we've kind of been waiting for maybe even all year for some of you it really feels like i don't know it feels like this has been like looming in the distance all year and we needed like this last breakthrough of these um the breakthrough energy that solar eclipses lunar eclipses two eclipses in a month can bring here for you to get to where you want to go to get to the choices that you've been waiting for the dream choices and yet the death card is there as well i don't hate the death card as you guys know if you watch my channel and you've been watching me for a while ever since i started you know that the death card for me is such a wonderful clearing out of energies yes it brings an end to things but it brings an end to something that needed to die you know there's rebirth here um it's almost like a rebirth of your consciousness in terms of it's a very deep i mean we got so much ninth house energy it really hits in a very deep way situations that you know have come up to a head and have needed to end for a while are going to hit us in a very significant way this month and yeah it's going to make you feel obviously like you've lost something like you've been like why me poor me i've been through so much why now why this like why do i still have to have these feelings it's almost like you look at the year that you've been through it might even bring up some depressed some feelings you know depression anxiety um feeling a little bit low this month but that's because you have to end some situations here that maybe we haven't been able to face up until now. We needed to. And, you know, Taurus, I don't want to say what the people always say about you, that you're stubborn. Because you're really not that stubborn. But you want, when you put so much effort, energy, love, everything into something, it can be really difficult for you guys to face that you can't fix it. That there's nothing that you can do about this that's going to bring you the results that you want. I don't know. Let's get, let's move on here, actually. Let's move on. <laughs> um, wow. Okay. I'm going to look at a little bit of advice in overcoming these obstacles. I'm going to look at advice, actually, with the Gustav Klimt deck. You guys have so many different decks out, and we're going to use so many more. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but Taurus, this is going to be a longer read. I can tell already. Let's call it your extended, but we're going deep. Advice for these obstacles. Advice. Because I don't think it's going to take you somewhere bad. But we need some advice here. You guys have been looking. <laughs> Get the hell out of your head. I know that this seems like everything seems so uncomfortable and upsetting. But I have to say, I feel it's only because you're not used to this much change being that's being thrown at you so quickly over the past year. It's exhausting. Yeah, it is. But it's asking you to shift your perspectives. And that can even be more exhausting than actually changing something actually putting an effort into something which you're more used to this requires a mindset shift and you can get stuck in one mindset and not be able to move forward um because you know there has to, i don't know it's just it's a more it's an air energy it's an air thing it's an air sign thing and we're not so comfortable in those realms if we don't have a lot of air placements it can be hard to change mindsets so i would say get out of that negative mindset things are really not as bad as they seem it can also be making you feel sick i don't know why my stomach just rumbled the way it did but it's it's affecting your physical health is the stress of all this and it's almost like and i feel like we said this maybe even last month you have to just surrender and allow this stuff to come in and, you know, say, bring it on. I'm ready. I'm ready to put in the effort towards where I want to go because sitting in this and trying to fight. It's like you're trying to fight a tsunami. You can't really do that here. Knave of Swords, you need to learn. You need to understand. Look at it from a different perspective. This requires some research, some real looking at, some analyzing. Knave of Swords.
And don't be afraid to make necessary changes. Do what's best for you. Being very clear-headed, clear-minded about something is what the King of Swords is about. You know, he doesn't, like, mess around. Sorry, I almost just knocked over this whole deck. Um, it's just like he has a lot of authority. And authority in terms of his mindset, in terms of... Mm, what is he saying? I need one more. There's something coming through here with him. There's a lot of air energy here. I would say... <sighs> Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. We really need to look at why we haven't moved forward on something and get really realistic air sign style about it. Take out the emotions. Look at your emotions. Why have you been sitting where you are? It's stagnant. It's not working. What are you doing? We really need to, you know, have those conversations almost with ourselves here. There's something that we haven't really, we've been feeling very probably, I don't know, neither here nor there, not great about wherever we've been, how things have been going. There's a lot of dissatisfaction, but an inability to really move on to better ways of going about this, better ways of pushing forward and making what you want happen, happen. The Eight of Cups says it's time to find new paths forward to leave where we have been and move into something new. It asks you to take that interesting, weird, you know, again, that Cups type of journey there that Eight of Cups is it can be kind of lonely, but there's... It retreats you from almost the emotional involvements of this. You need to retreat from the emotional aspects and move forward for what you know in reality is best for you and not how it makes you feel right now. And that's why it almost feels like, yeah, there's a sacrifice, but look what comes in as soon as you're willing to, you know, get on that Eight of Cups energy this month. There's a lot of eights here. I feel like we're not done with eights. There's going to be more, but there's already have two out on the table, eight of pentacles, eight of cups. So work needs to be done moving forward, you know, in terms of moving forward on an emotional level towards more emotional fulfillment, towards happiness. Sacrifices do need to be made this month. You have to be willing to surrender and sacrifice in order to attain the wealth, the prosperity, everything you have wanted. It's all right there. But you have to stop, you know, thinking, looking, planning and start doing Two of Wands reversed. Get yourself out of that space where we get maybe a little bit too confused about this direction, that direction, and just allow things to happen. Don't, it's like, get control of your head space, but don't let it overrun you and get you going in circles. You know, I can't make a decision. I can't do this. You just kind of have to flow with these energies and keep your head above water here. This is like a crazy reading. I don't know how I'm going to fit all these cards out here, but we are. But we are. It's going to happen. <laughs> all right? It's going to happen. So we need more cards out here. Okay. Um, moving on to the Morgan Greer. See, now I'm even going off of my own template here because I knew we were going to. But let's look at... Your accomplishments through this. I really do want to see, before I even get into that, where this Nine of Cups, Two of Swords death card leads to. Because it feels very, like there's something, like it leads to something pretty big here. What does it lead to? And again, we get the Eight of Cups on the other side of it, the Star. What are your hopes, your dreams, your wishes? What is it that you wanted? The star is so magical, so beautiful. It really asks you, you know, or enlightens you into where you can go. The eight of cups and the star, I mean, that's what you're moving towards. Know that whatever it is you're leaving behind, whatever it is you've had to sacrifice to move towards, you're moving towards a star situation, towards rebirth, regeneration, inspiration, just absolutely this enlightened, beautiful, finding your inner light kind of energy. You're finding it. You're going to find your way forward here. You're going to find your way to, it feels like, the healing that we've been seeking, the light at the end of the tunnel. It has a lot to do with work, doesn't it? For some of you, your dream opportunities, your dream job. 
having to say goodbye to what life was to open yourself up to what life is going to be. For some of you, it's that work has changed so drastically so quickly. You might be so busy and your life has suddenly changed and you kind of feel out of your depths. For some of you, could be that kind of story. But there's a beautiful sense with the Eight of Cups. Sorry, Eight of, Eight of Cups, Star, Eight of Pentacles, the Chariot. Eight of Cups and Eight of Pentacles are really what's important this month for you. Those cards keep coming up and they do signify moving on to more solid career situations, more emotionally happy situations, something that is really, um, that you can build stable ground on for Pentacles comes out. Yeah, he might not be the most interesting, but I think that some of you needed that stability. You need to know that this is yours. You can hold on to this. You know, this situation is something we can expect x y and z with and not be all over the place because there's been a lot of instability and we've been trying to, i feel like cultivate a working stability here as we move forward and it's very difficult to fight the energies you know with uranus in our sign and everything else going on that's kind of out of control and trying to keep things in a more stable place where we can feel comfortable and like we know where we're going and we can see where all this is going to be leading us to because you guys don't like to put down roots unless you can promise you know unless it's promised that this is going to lead you where you want to go wow i don't even want to pull that many out i don't think any after this six of swords and the ace of pentacles you're moving towards something amazing i'm sorry i'm gonna i know it's reversed it's really difficult to like put that up and have you guys see it the right way but six of swords ace of pentacles he's moving towards that pentacle you have to move on to get that money and for some of you i don't know we've been picking up on this for a while it could be moving it could be that you have job offers opportunities that you have been trying to make happen that involve you moving involve you leaving one place involve you leaving one career one situation one lifestyle even a city a part of the world and going somewhere else we do see the world a couple times and this as well reversed and upright that's endings and beginnings closing one chapter and opening the what feels like an amazing prosperous excitement um sorry ex exciting beautiful just incredible chapter that is of the highest caliber of what we've been trying to get to it's like finally i am here this is amazing but you guys do have to move forward and face some uncomfortable feelings face some decisions uh that involve you know where we need to give up on certain things give up the fight and start fighting for something else we have choices and we can't sit at the fence any longer this month. It's time to make those decisions. It's time to end a stalemate in your life. Let's pull a couple cards for love and then we're going to call it a day. Because money has come up a billion times in this. Um, actually, you know what? Weirdly enough, before we get into love, let's pull a couple of cards for money with the Egyptian deck. I don't know why it really wants to be used for that, but it, would. it just does, okay? So we're going to go with it. Anything else we need to know about was financial security, money, career. We get one. For Tauruses this month of December 2019. Five of Swords reversed. There are two blank cards in this deck. And I like to leave them in there, honestly. Because I think that... It allows for you to see this loss as you might. That's kind of interesting because Five of Swords reverse to me is, yeah, we might have lost a fight. We might not have acted the way we wanted to, done the things that we maybe should have. We might be feeling remorseful in those kinds of ways. But you can take this however you want. And the Ten of Pentacles is right behind it. And this is the reason I use this deck for you because when I was shuffling and being like, do you want to be used for the Taurus reading? This card came out and I was like, we got something to say about money, don't we? Um, because this card is a card that I think is probably a favorite of your energy and of your sign. It's getting that financial security, the stability, all the trappings of wealth, the home, the money, the family stuff. The, it's all really good. You can see this situation that has ended as a loss, but you can also see it as the ability to finally move into this kind of energy. To seek this out. We might have lost one thing. But was it is in the pursuit of that Ten of Pentacles. Which comes 
I don't know, there's something that happens this month in between this loss, this feeling of loss, this feeling of I've lost this, it's not mine anymore, and I have to walk away from it. Oh my God. And what is between it all? Two of Cups, possible money offers, job offers, um, something coming through that is, again, a fair exchange. Expect offers, expect opportunities, but I will also say you can't expect them unless you're putting yourself out there and put, making yourself available for them as well. We have the offer this month that is going to bring in that Ten of Pentacles. And yet, how we get from Five of Swords reversed to Ten of Pentacles is blank. That's the mystery. That's the story. That's where we have those choices, those endings. This sugar spice. I don't know. It's, it's like ingredient X here this month. There's an ingredient X and I don't, I'm not 100% sure what, if we can really 100% define it for all of you at once in this reading when your energy is the tower. We have so many major energies, you know, the world reversed and upright. I would say expect the unexpected, but also make yourself available for the unexpected. Interesting. Woo! I'm really liking this read, guys. This is so much fun. Okay. I think we might just end up doing love readings this month because I don't know if we're going to even have time for any love cards for you. I'm going to pull a couple. From the Hobbit deck, we have one, two, three, four, five decks out. Let's bring a sixth out, right? Uh, just a general love pull here. Ooh, the chariot comes out and so does the page of coins. Trying to make sure we're in alignment, especially if we want to bring more passion um, into our relationships. You got to find new ways to communicate and new ways to make sure that we're headed in the same direction. It could be new opportunities as well that are factoring into, I don't know, bringing about more passion, more communication. Um, Queen of Wands, Page of Pentacles. You could be dealing with, you know, a Virgo, a Capricorn, maybe even a Taurus as well, or a Sag. Aries, maybe a Leo here. But if you want things to progress in terms of love, you have the ability this month to bring passion back in, in all shapes and forms. Keep it sensual, keep it sexy. <laughs> have some fun, bring the romance back in. Don't be afraid to communicate how you feel. Find new ways, honestly, of um, showing love, communicating love. And bringing it about in your life here you have all the power and really you can take a relationship one way or the other but it really depends on what kind of energy you lean into and what you want and what you do with where with the power that you have right now and the stance that you have in terms of love know that you know whatever which way it goes here you have a lot to say in it it feels that you are kind of a driving force this month in relate in your relationships so make sure you're driving it in the right direction if you want it to get better or if you want a relationship to come of this, you can begin the starts of something, but you kind of have to be the pushing block here. Or, you know, the person that kind of starts things off. The instigator, whatever. I can't speak anymore. Whew, okay, let's get a couple of romance angel cards. I do think I'll be doing more in-depth love readings for all the signs this month. Probably won't be that long, but I'll probably do them. So we're ending out the decade, so why not? So keep an eye out for those. Hit that wiggly bell in the corner and it'll notify you when I post up my new videos or even when I go live because I've been having fun going live with you guys lately. Ooh, okay. Getting to know each other. As you reveal your innermost selves to each other, your bond deepens. Get involved with your partner, whoever it is that you want to be involved with. Talk to them. Communicate. Get to know this person and show them who you really are, what you're really looking for. A lot of conversations, a lot of communicating. And Taurus, you're kind of known to sometimes hold things back. So maybe get some lapis lazuli and make sure you are speaking your truth. Ooh, romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. I'm just going to leave that one exactly where it is. So I think that's a beautiful message that doesn't need to be explained any further. All right. Let's move on now to the Halloween Oracle. Stacy DeMarco and see what this has to say here for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus advice, overall messages of guidance from your higher selves for December 2019 
Um, okay. I feel like there's one more here. Get one more, one more, not five. Hmm, not you. You. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. Okay, Apple Risk and Reward is your first card out here. Ooh, I love this card. Mm. All right. Apples have been an iconic part of the mythos from ancient times to modern. The story of the poison apple in Snow White, to the Roman goddess Pomona's magical apple tree, to the Christian's tempting fruit in the Garden of Eden. Should you receive this apple in your reading, it's time to look at how risk plays out in your life. Are you hedging your bets and not trying anything new? Do you want to change but are not willing to change anything? Are you willing to risk to get a greater reward? Or alternatively, are you risking too much too often? Time to take some risks. I feel like this is the month for risks. I feel like that's what we're getting here. Um, then we get winter, the sacredness of pausing. Did I find it? I almost just put it away before reading it to you, huh? Um, all right. Should the winter card appear to you, it's time to let what no longer serves you die away. Um, where it seems natural and right to let things that have been bothering you for some time die back. Take real action to change those things. Anything that is superfluous, extra, and burdensome, release it. What a perfect card as we, at least in the Northern Hemisphere, enter with the winter months here as we enter the holiday season and the beginning of the new year. Pause. Take that risk. Make You may not go for it. You're not going to get the rewards if you don't take the risk. But at the same time, things might almost be at this interesting pause. It's almost like calm and then the storm hits. So expect that this month. Uranus is in your sign. How could you expect anything less? All right, guys, those are your messages for December 2019. I hope you enjoyed them. This reading went much longer than I expected it to. Um, thank you so much, Tauruses, for all of your support. If you haven't, do um, check out your other monthly reads for your other placements. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to share the video if you enjoyed it. I really appreciate that, and it does help out the channel and me quite a bit. So thank you for all of you guys who share the videos. It, I really appreciate that as well. Um, thank you for always being um, one of my highest viewing signs here. So thank you guys. Love you so much. And I hope you have a wonderful and blessed month, guys. If you want to book a reading, all that info is right below this video in my description box, as well as any Teespring information and, um, yeah, pretty much all that kind of stuff. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful and blessed December. Happy end of the year. I'll see you guys in 2021.